I made this animal pen on like day three of this world and it's still the animal pen I use to this day. Now we are past like day 100. So I think it's very much long overdue that these guys get an upgrade to their house. I mean, just like look at these living conditions, all right? Like this is not humane. I would like to build a massive farmhouse for these guys. Cows and sheep are two of the most important mobs in this game, so I feel like they deserve the best. But before I get to that, there are a couple things I would like to do first. One small project I would like to get done before we do anything with the animals is I would like to convert this skeleton spawner down here into an experience farm. Turns out it is under the farm right now. I had to go back and watch my first episode to see exactly where it is but I was able to dig down right here and enter the cave. So this will be my temporary entrance. I will definitely be making a more permanent one eventually. Anyway, though, we found this in episode one and I would like to convert this into a very basic experience farm. And that sort of leads me into the second thing I would like to get done before we start building. I want to enchant a whole bunch of tools until I get fortune because I really, really badly need more iron. I don't think it's quite time for me to make an iron farm. So I think just going the fortune route and going mining for a while will be good. And obviously I should probably get closer to a full set of diamond armor. I haven't made any progress on that yet, but I'm really dripped out in this iron armor, that's for sure. But quickly, before I get started on the skeleton farm, I would like to introduce everybody to the YouTube member barrel right here. So if you would like to be named a block in this world, like all of these beautiful people, click the link in the description and become a Shramalam. I want to eventually make an entire building for the YouTube members, but for now, they will all be chilling in this barrel. I just ended up choosing a whole bunch of random blocks to name you guys after, aside from this one. So the Cake is Alive wanted to be named a Lapis Block. That was always an option, so if you want to be named a specific block, please let me know. Even if you're one of these people already named after a block, I can rename another block after you. It's not a problem. Just anything that you would like to be named after, I will go get, but you should definitely know that uh, if you ask to be named like a netherite block or something like that, I'll do that. Uh, it, it just might not be for a while. <laughs> so you gotta give me some patience if you uh, wanna be named after a really hard to get block. This is for you, Concern Martian 6430 Last episode, I also made a camel friend and I asked you all to give me some name suggestions. I checked my chests. I quadruple checked my chests, all right? I don't actually have a name tag this time. So to remind myself of the name, let's go ahead and put it on this sign. We're going to be naming the camel Egg all lowercase. <laughs> I think that's just a really funny name and I'm glad someone suggested it. <laughs> now that I have addressed some comments of the recent episode and most importantly, told you how you can give me money, um, we can go ahead and start working on the mob farm. For that though, we have to go to the nether because I'm gonna need soul sand. Oh, I really don't like doing this. The nether's fine in like regular Minecraft, but it's like really easy to die there. Then, you know, this is hardcore. So that would be less than ideal. I have one piece of iron left. I am struggling. I actually have a flint and steel. Let's go. I don't have to waste my one piece of iron. And I haven't even kind of thought about where my nether portal is going to end up. For the time being, it's just going to go right here. I guess let's throw on some golden boots. I have a bow, only nine arrows, but that should be hopefully enough for a little while. I also have a shield here. All right. I hate doing this, but let's go. Please don't be a bad spawn. Just not a basalt delta. I'll take most other things. It's not directly a basalt delta. So I suppose this could have been a lot worse. We do have another fortress over there. That's good to know. I'm not getting anywhere near that today. I may as well also grab some quartz. I'm probably gonna start making some farms soon that requires some observers. So it's just nice to have this stuff. And also it's a good source of early game experience. Even though I am working on an experience farm. I mean, <laughs> I'll still take all the experience I can get. I have spotted some soul sand. I'm not sure that's worth trying to get right now though. I feel like it's probably in my best interest to look around elsewhere first and see if I don't have to cross an entire lava lake. There's some right beneath me here. That looks way safer to get to. It's gonna very safely staircase down right here and let's see if we can just grab some of this soul sand don't think i need much pretty sure i just need one but i just want to grab a little bit more just to be safe we have eight also managed to get about two stacks of nether quartz and we are at level 28 so i'm just gonna stay in here until i can get to level 30 and then we'll leave i'm level 30 now so i am absolutely getting out of here and now let's head into the enchanting library we built last time and let me enchant my sword because we get guaranteed a looting three Looting three, smite five, knock back two. I think I'd prefer sharpness over smite, but still, that's a really good sword to get right away. I should now have everything that I need to make this skeleton farm, so let's cut it away to a quick time lapse.
Now that I have a good source of early game experience, the next thing to do on the agenda is get Fortune 3 on a pickaxe. Now the issue with that is I don't have any more diamonds to make another pickaxe. I could disenchant my current pickaxe, but I like having Unbreaking 3 and Efficiency 4. So the first step into getting Fortune 3 is to go mining to get a couple more diamonds. While doing this, I got incredibly distracted. I wanted to make a really small mining building because one of my main goals for this series is to have a build for everything. So that includes just a normal strip mine. I wanted to limit myself with this build to only using blocks that I already have. Kind of wanted to impose a challenge to make myself build smaller, but I ran into a bit of an obstacle while building this thing. <laughs> but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So to begin, I found this little cliffside. Don't even really think you can call it a cliffside. Definitely way more of just a small hill. Regardless though, I found this spot and I wanted to make this build going into the hill. I started off just making this tiny building using the same materials I used for my starter house, just in a much smaller version. We still have the stone foundation and then I'm using a combination of birch, sand and sandstone for the walls. And then we're going to be using a spruce roof. So actually it has changed up a little bit from the deep slate on the starter house. I ran into the problem when I started making the roof. When I tried to connect it up to the hill, I realized the roof was too tall. And I thought this building would look kind of dumb if I made it a smaller roof, and I didn't want to just bolster up the hill in the back. I feel like that would also look kind of weird. So my solution was to put a much larger building on top of the hill and just use the part that I was building as the entrance to the whole thing. Gotta be honest, I have no actual plans for the inside of the like extra part of the building I'm making. No idea what I want to put there. So if you guys have any suggestions of what I should put there, please let me know in the comments. This was actually a really nice nice distraction because I've been pretty used to making all my builds fairly planned out. Not as much as most Minecraft YouTubers, I'm sure, but I normally have a really solid idea of what exactly I'm going to build and when I'm going to build that thing in my videos. This was entirely out of left field. I did not expect to do this at all, but it's the little things like this that, you know, kind of just make me realize why I fell in love with this game in the first place. Once I had the building up though, I was able to actually make it useful by making a water elevator all the way down to Y negative 59. I mined around a little bit down there until I stumbled across some diamonds. I made sure to only gather three of the diamonds and I planned on coming back once I got fortune three. And thanks to the new skeleton spawner, this really did not take long at all. I was probably only there for like 20 minutes, went through a couple of enchantments until I got this efficiency for fortune three pickaxe, which is perfect because I can combine it with my current pickaxe to end up with an efficiency five fortune three and unbreaking three pickaxe. So at long last, fortune three is acquired. Now with this incredibly good diamond pickaxe, I'm going to hit the mines once again. I'm going to start by gathering these two diamonds we just found and, you know, hopefully it gives me more than two diamonds. It gave us six. Oh, that's so good. I love Fortune 3. And now I'm going to set a timer for half an hour and I'm going to see how many diamonds I can find in that time. So let's start the timer in three, two, one. All right, the timer is up and we have 81 diamonds. Now, of course, subtract the six I got down here before I started the timer. And that leaves me with 75 diamonds that I got in that half an hour. Not too bad. Honestly, I kind of just was shooting for over a stack, so I'll take it. That is more than enough diamonds to get all the tools and armor I'm going to need. And I also got a crap ton of deep slate. So that's really nice. Got a decent amount of redstone too. Got some lapis, which I actually desperately need and a little bit of iron and gold. So all in all, that was really successful. I do think it's time though to craft an armor stand, take off all of my iron armor and display it right here. Of course I am doing that because I'm gonna craft myself my first set of diamond armor. Before I throw this armor on though, I would like to use this dune armor trim. We just have to duplicate it a couple times. And for that, I think I need sandstone, the armor trim and then surround it with diamonds. All in all, this is costing me 21 diamonds. Kind of a lot, but I don't know. I think it's worth it. I'm gonna go ahead and put a lapis trim on my diamond armor. And now we can throw on the fully kitted diamond armor. Once again, your boy is dripped out beyond belief. Up next then, let me complete my diamond set of tools. So I'm gonna make another diamond ax. I think I wanna enchant this soon and hopefully combine it with the one I already enchanted. 
Gonna of course make myself a shovel, and then why not, let's make the hoe. And just like that, I am down to 30 diamonds. I guess it does cost a lot though, if you wanna look this good. Next up, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time at the mob grinder, because I would like to enchant my shovel and my ax. I think I'll worry about enchanting the armor next episode, because your boy really wants to get building again. <laughs> so I'll be right back when I am level 33. Yeah, that really didn't take too long. I'm very glad I built that farm. I also got these three enchanted bows, where if I combine them together, they actually won't be that bad. These first two will get me power three. I can combine that with this one to get punch two as well, and then it'll just have unbreaking two. That's not too bad, just from some skeletons. But let's head to the enchanting tower, and let me see what I can get on an axe, which is actually guaranteed unbreaking. I'll take that, because my current axe doesn't have that. Efficiency four unbreaking. That's actually perfect, because I can combine that with my other axe and get efficiency five. Unbreaking three, silk touch. That's gonna be an incredible axe. Fortune three, I don't really want that on a shovel. I think I'm still gonna do it though. Give me efficiency and unbreaking. All right, efficiency four, unbreaking three, fortune three. Don't really care about the fortune, but everything else is really nice. And let's combine these two axes together to get efficiency five, silk touch, unbreaking three. That looks amazing. And now that I have a whole bunch of enchanted diamond tools, it is time to go collect some materials. While I'm running around here gathering up all of these materials, I wanted to take this time to give you guys a little bit of insight on how I come up with these builds and where I got the specific inspiration for this farmhouse. Normally my builds kind of just start out with a block palette. I knew I wanted to use mud, dark oak, and bamboo in this build specifically. After I solidified the block palette, I took to Google. And I spent a little bit of time looking up some medieval farmhouses and some medieval barns. Medieval is just like my favorite style to build in in Minecraft. That's what I'm currently doing. That's what I've been doing for a really long time. So that's kind of my bread and butter here. <laughs> While I was searching around some images, I found this specific image. The only thing I was looking for here was the shape of the build. I already had the block palette figured out and I was struggling to figure out a shape that was different from the barn I built last season. I just kept thinking of that same design over and over again. I really just couldn't get it out of my head. The build in the picture here ends up being way more complex than the build I end up doing. And I feel like if I built this thing in creative mode, first, I probably could have made it a bit more complex. And maybe once this becomes my full-time job, I'll actually have time to mess around in creative mode a lot. But with the color palette and the relative shape in mind, along with the materials now recently gathered, it was time for me to figure out a location for this build. So at this point, I should pretty much have all of the materials I'm going to need for this build. But I could definitely use some more food. <laughs> I'm in danger! Just over two and a half stacks of raw beef should last me a long time. All the materials I gathered are pretty much in this chest here. Now I'm really hoping that these are enough materials to finish this whole build, but I think this thing is going to be quite big. Hey. Now as for a location for this build, I kind of always had this area over here in mind. And that's why I went ahead and cleared out all the trees here when I was gathering up materials. Like not only did this gather some oak for me for this build, but it also just cleared out a spot for me to actually put this thing. I definitely do need to cut down these levels of grass though. I'm not sure if I'll bring it all down to this level I'm on right now, or maybe one level higher, but it's definitely going to come down significantly. I do think though, I'm going to do all of this, including the build in one giant time lapse. So let me cut it away and I hope you guys enjoy the build.
while I was building that farmhouse, I nearly died three times. I fell off the roof once and went down to like three hearts. I nearly got smacked up by an enderman that I looked at while trying to build the roof. And then a creeper spawned inside the building and blew up directly behind me. Each of those times, I actually thought that this series was over. I really need to enchant my armor though. I think that's gonna be like the first thing I do next episode. Anyway though, um, now that the main build of the episode is completed, let me take you guys through everything that I accomplished today. I transformed this skeleton spawner that I found in the first episode into a very starter worthy experience farm. And uh, don't worry, this is not going to be the final design. I plan on making this thing look really nice in the future. I also went ahead and designed a much better looking strip mine. This totally beats the staircase I had underneath my house, and uh, it's probably a bit overkill. And last, but certainly not least, I built up this massive farmhouse. I absolutely love the block palette for this build, and I'm really excited to continue working with these blocks in this area in the future, because I plan on having an entire farming district pretty much out of these blocks. But just uh, don't look inside yet because there's nothing going on there. I'm waiting until I get my hands on a few more blocks and some villagers to fully furnish this interior. And I'm also kind of thinking about throwing an automatic wool farm in this place somewhere and then dedicating like the two outdoor pens to just cows. But that is going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed and I will talk to you in the next one. That's not what I normally say, but we're gonna roll with it. See ya. <laughs>